Hello there, my name is Benedetta and welcome to Tender is the Read. In today's video, I am actually going to be doing something inspired by the Rory Gilmore Reading Challenge. So I've actually only just watched Gilmore Girls for the first time last autumn, so it was perfect timing for that, but also I am incredibly late to the party, especially as a bookish gal, so um, it was nevertheless a great time. I think it's a really cute show, and of course Rory is such a big reader, and in fact I actually looked it up and she reads around 330 odd books throughout the series like on screen and looking up her reading list I actually wondered how much overlap we had and there's also quite a few books in the show that I wouldn't mind reading myself. So what I'm going to do in this video is actually going through the books out of Rory's list that I have managed to read and it's actually around 70. I'm not even close to half but nevertheless I feel like a pretty considerable amount of books considering also the fact that I'm not exactly all the books she is interested in are books I would personally choose to pick. So what I'm going to do is give you my quick fire thoughts on each of these 70 books so that you know what to expect if you want to do the Rory Gilmore reading challenge as well. These are going to be in alphabetical order. So let's start from the top. The first one is going to be 1984 by George Orwell. As you know, this is a very famous dystopian novel and I read it quite a few years ago now, but I still remember it so clearly. The concepts introduced by Orwell in this novel are so interesting and they ring so true today that it's quite scary. So you must read this. It's a good time. It's quite creepy, but nevertheless, um, very thought provoking. Number two, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So I read this book just a couple of years ago and honestly I do love it. I do find some issues with the characters, of not so much Huck but Jim who is a black slave who is escaping from the south. I mean the thing is the themes are good however I feel like the story especially in the end is quite contrived in order to make everything together so of course Mark Twain had amazing intentions behind it and of course this is historically very important but um, today I don't know if I loved it. Next up is Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This book is actually so sweet and cute. I always recommend it as a classic for beginners. It's similar to the Disney movie, which I'm sure you're familiar with in terms of how whimsical it is. But um, nevertheless, it's quite different in the sense of the storyline itself. And um, it's just really creative and fun. And it's also perfect for younger children. Next up, Anna Karina. So this book is not my favourite by Tolstoy, but also such an amazing story. So Anna Karina, the teacher character, makes very interesting choices, perhaps wrong, and so this explores so the fallout from her decision of essentially following her heart. In the meantime, we've got so many other characters featuring in the story that are also just beautifully written and have all these sort of like philosophical reflections, very much typical tall stories. So I really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend. Art of War. So this is a an ancient Chinese text all about knowing your enemy and this is about war but it's also about sort of like how to approach life in a sense. It's interesting to read something from such uh, you know, an ancient time and an ancient culture at that, so yeah. Atonement by Ian McEwan is a modern novel, very famous because of its movie adaptation in 2004. I absolutely adore this novel. It's a slow burn told from the eyes of this 12 year old girl who essentially is trying to understand and piece together how a very drastic decision brought to immense changes in her life and it's in this beautiful setting between the 30s and the 40s so um, it's heartbreaking one of the most heartbreaking novels. I definitely cried to that one, but I could not recommend it more. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath is such a great novel. It's one of my favourite classics and I always recommend it also for beginners. Written in the 60s and it's very autobiographical, telling the life of a girl who obviously suffers from depression and is essentially trying to deal with uh, what that entails. It's gorgeous, written so beautifully, obviously Sylvia Plath 
was a poet, so no surprises there. And especially if you're a woman, you have to read this. It's formative. Next up is the ancient English poem Beowulf, and I read this last summer and I am so used to reading ancient hero stories from, you know, ancient Greece and Rome and I wasn't entirely sold on this one. But of course, historically very important. You might have read this in school, um, so I mean, why not? Another short book is Candide by Voltaire. Uh, this is a sort of little philosophical satire from the 1700s and it's really funny. It's a story that sort of satirizes the philosophy of optimism and the idea that we all live in the best of possible worlds and essentially things happen that don't exactly seem the best possibility ever and I don't know. It is quite funny for the time it was written in and obviously invites reflection even though, I don't know, I don't find it extremely current per se. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas is again one of those massive novels that is entirely worth your time. It's a really interesting adventure about revenge, providence, and justice and this is what our protagonist, the Count, does. And yeah, I mean, I really, really enjoyed this and although it takes a while to read, I would highly recommend it. Next up, we have Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. It's not the only Dostoevsky that is featured in this list, but it's actually the only one out of them I've read. It's, as you can imagine, is about a man who commits a crime and then slowly sort of goes crazy trying to escape punishment and grows increasingly paranoid. Uh, it's extremely neurotic, but it's really something to behold and Dostoevsky is a great author, so. Next up is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So we're gonna have so many Dickens books in this list and I hate them all, I'm just gonna tell you up front. Um, David Copperfield is a standard coming of age story and I just really didn't enjoy it. I read it as a teenager and yeah, I don't know, not my taste whatsoever. Next up is The Da Vinci Code. Remember when that was popular? I mean, I was a child, but still, that was something. Um, I read it actually, and yeah, I don't know. It's I don't know if people are still reading it. It was one of those big sort of blockbuster books for a second, and then he made a movie, and then I don't know. People just think it's not great literature, and yeah, I think they're probably right. Uh, but it's an inoffensive sort of mystery story with a little sort of like occult and conspiracy theories, but like you know, again, inoffensive. Next up is The Divine Comedy by Dante. This book I read throughout school because obviously I did my education in Italy and I can tell you it's obviously great and um, this is not a surprise, many people will read it abroad as well and really appreciate it, especially the inferno part. But nevertheless, I feel like you need to know about sort of medieval Italian culture to really appreciate all the nuance of Dante's um, sort of creation, even though, again, there are a lot of redeeming qualities beside that. It's really a difficult book, so I will warn you about that, but, you know, it's a challenge. The next one is A Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a novella and it's quite entertaining. It's one of your original sci-fi and horror stories and, I mean, it does ask bigger questions about good and evil, but really I think it's just like a fun story experimenting with where the human imagination can take you, really. So the next book is actually my favourite Jane Austen, it's Emma. I love it, this is such a fun story. Um, if you know the plot of Clueless, the chick flick movie, um, you know this story because the reimagining of Emma and I don't know, it's really the most witty out of Jane Austen's novels and the funniest and um, for that reason, you know, it's my favourite and I would highly recommend it. On the other hand, the next one is a favourite for me, it's Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton. And I find it really depressing and also out of character for a Wharton novel as far as what I've read from her. This is set in upstate New York and it's just really depressing and um, I won't spoil it because it's only something like 90 pages so I don't want to say anymore but um, yeah not for me. Moving on to The Fellowship of the Ring. I read this such a long time ago. Of course this is the first book in the Lord of the Ring trilogy by Tolkien and I mean I don't know if I would separate it from the others but Fellowship is probably the most sort of like adventure heavy one and the most 
light and really fun so I mean yeah obviously I would recommend it. Next up is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I also read Frankenstein when I was young and I think I didn't appreciate it a lot but I think that's a me problem. I just think that the sci-fi angle um, and sort of the horror vibes didn't do it for me but I understand its grandeur on sort of like a philosophical level and also I love the fact that Mary Shelley wrote this as a bet against Lord Byron and she literally created a new genre. The next book is one that I gave five stars to last summer so if you've watched my recaps you already know it's Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. I've loved this movie for the longest time and only later came to read the book and they're very different and since the book is a non-fictional account of Susanna's time in a basically psychiatric hospital or like an asylum in the 60s and it's really honest and earnest exploration or uh, sort of recollection of her time there and also her journey understanding her mental illness and um, yeah just again five stars so what else can I say. Another favourite from last year Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. While controversial this book won me over because the central characters and story uh, that has to do with a love story, a romance, ill-fated as it may be, is something to behold in my opinion. Um, Scarlet is a gorgeous character as much as she is flawed but again that is by design and Rhett Butler is one of the best male leads in all of literature so I mean I'm kind of obsessed with this book. Next up is actually my favourite book of all time, so we're on a roll here, it's The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. If you've not read it already, I mean, what are you waiting for? It is the best novel ever, the greatest American novel, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's absolutely worth your time, also because it's really short and it's got everything. It's got ill-fated romance, it's got glam, it's philosophical in a way. I just adore it and can't get enough. Next up is another great book. It's one of my favourite Shakespeare plays, Hamlet. Um, this is a great story about sort of revenge but also the process of grief and feeling responsible and also powerless and it's just a really gorgeous play um, that has so many layers to unpack so um, definitely one of Shakespeare's best. Moving on to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and then right afterwards it's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone so book four and book one. Not my favourites. I mean I was a big fan of Harry Potter for a minute uh, there when I was sort of like a child and um, obviously at the minute I have fallen out of love with it just because of the author not being the greatest person and sort of like going back and thinking well the books weren't that great after which I know I'm sorry it's a controversial opinion um, and I'm, I'm still fairly attached to them though so um, but in particular these two books Goblet of Fire and Philosopher's Stone they are not my favourites. I mean Philosopher's Stone is sweet enough and Goblet of Fire is interesting but personally I'm more Order the Phoenix onwards type of girl. <laughs> then we have The Iliad by Homer. Again, I cannot get enough of recommending this book. I love The Iliad. I actually didn't love it as much when I first read it when I was in school but now I really appreciated it on my latest reread a couple of years back and it's actually great if you want to get into Greek mythology. I've talked about it in other videos so I won't go any further on that but yeah. The next book got the saddest story about. So it's I'm with the Band by Pamela the Barris, the Bears, the Bears, I I'm not sure but um, it's, it's the memoirs of this girl who is a self-described groupie and it basically um, tells about her adventures with all these real life rock stars. Everything is accurate and true. There's loads of photos to prove that she knew these people. And I actually have had this book for several years in my home in Italy and when I was moving back, actually moving to Dublin for the first time, I brought it with me to read again on the plane and then my pouch where I had it with my neck pillow actually got detached from my suitcase somehow and I lost it in the middle of Heathrow Airport and you know there was no way of retrieving it. I, I looked for it as much as I could but it's just gone and I need to repurchase it but it's so sad. I mean 
I never lose books. That was just so heartbreaking. And I didn't have anything to read for the last bit of my journey, which was annoying. But yeah, I'm extremely attached to this book. I absolutely adore it. And it was very formative when I read it when I was a teenager. And if you love the movie Almost Famous, this is very much a book that inspired that. And the character of Penny Lane is very much uh, akin to Miss Pamela. Next up is In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. Um, I've talked about this book before because I think it's really great. It's the first sort of true crime novel and it goes into this very sort of gruesome murder in I think Arkansas or something like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great, great novel that I would highly recommend. Another one of my favourites is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Mr. Rochester is my problematic fave and I stand by that. This is sort of like a coming of age story in the 1800s about Jane becoming sort of like a woman who really cares about her independence and lives by that. Uh, well, until she doesn't quite, but she gains her happy ending, so that's good enough. Another Shakespeare play, Julius Caesar. This is one of the first ones I ever read, and all I can remember about it is that it's really good. It's a retelling of the death of Julius Caesar. It's fascinating, it's got some really good one-liners, as you would expect from Shakespeare. Okay, last positivity for the next one is one of my least favorite classics. It's Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Florence. I found this book rather disgusting. I did not love the plot at all. It's about this lady whose husband is in a wheelchair due to an accident and essentially impotent, I think, and he sort of tells her that she can go entertain herself with other people, uh, especially because he wants to have an heir. But then she pecks the groundskeeper and he's really demeaning towards her. So I just feel like they're really poorly matched. And some of the things that D.H. Florence uh, makes them say are just slightly hateful, not to say, you know, racist, misogynistic and homophobic. So, you know, I honestly disgusted while reading it. So yeah. Another Dickens, so again, not so great, is Little Dorrit. I actually read this when I was a child. I think it has to do with some commentary about the justice system in Victorian England, which wasn't great. I don't remember much about it though, so um, I will abstain from judging too much. <laughs> Okay, fortunately a good one is next. It's Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Of course you know about this, it's one of the most famous books of all time. It's the story of these four sisters who grew up together during the Civil War and it's it's sweet, it's wholesome, it's obviously a coming of age story and yeah. Another least favourite, Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I have so many issues with this book. I don't love books that centre around children as protagonists. And I didn't like the writing on this. I don't know why the way it was written was too convoluted for me. And also just the premise of kids going absolutely feral on a desert island. I don't buy it. Um, I think that this was an overreaction just because he had a personal issue with stories like Coral Island that thought that everything would be okay in that scenario. And um, I think the truth is probably in the middle, but I think, yeah, he overdid it and it's a bit nasty once again, so nah. Next up is The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, which is a very short story. I won't spoil it at all, but um, if you know anything about Shirley Jackson, she's a really talented author when it comes to a genre of sort of like suspense and sort of horror, but a very grounded horror. So um, I really enjoyed this. It was very um, intense. Speaking of intense, it's Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Again, I really, really enjoyed this play. As I've read more tragedies, I feel like this has gone slightly down in my ranking, but nevertheless, you know, it's the famous play about a Scottish king who kills his predecessor and then is sort of like haunted by the idea of that. And there's a very gorgeous female character in Lady Macbeth, uh, one of the best in the entire folio. So yeah, obviously you must read this. It's a good time. Another controversial opinion, the next book, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, um, also not a winner in my book. I found Emma Bovary, the protagonist, really off-putting. She sort of wants her cake and eat it too, and she's really unfair with the people, the men she deals with, just irresponsible. Every choice that she makes is motivated by selfishness and egotism, and um, 
not surprising when things don't turn out her way but um, also I couldn't sympathize with her. Okay now we have our first Shakespeare comedy and it is The Merry Wives of Windsor. I remember reading this honestly not one to write home about. It's fine but at the same time I mean to be fair it is fine. It's quite funny as well there's a lot of sort of like retribution on a part part of these wives who get made advances to and they don't appreciate it so they sort of humiliate the man and it's goofy but um, I don't know, I don't find it one of the masterpieces. Okay, another book I have sort of a hot take about or maybe just mixed feelings is The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. I mean, obviously Kafka sounds like a great author and I want to read more from him, but this story, this novella, if you will, it's just a bit disgusting and I know there's really deep themes but it is about somebody being turned into a beetle or cockroach or something and I don't know, it just, uh, I can't, it's not for me. Next up is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I read this book and I found it extremely fascinating whenever it talked about sort of like whale science and then the story itself, I kind of tuned out, um, which I feel like is sort of the opposite of what you would do normally but um obviously those are my priorities so um yeah not a particularly great fan of this one <laughs> okay back to some five star reads it's a movable feast from one of my favorites Hemingway so I've just talked about this in my previous video because I read it in January a gorgeous gorgeous story from one of the most talented authors of all time I appreciated just the fact that it's non-fiction and it's about his life and there's so many other authors that feature big names and obviously Paris as the backdrop. I mean, this is, I mean, it was just amazing for me. Another five star read is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Um, strangely enough, this was the first book that I read by Virginia Woolf that actually convinced me of sort of her talent. No, this is so mean. Of course she is talented. I knew that reading the other books too, but this one, it was just so impactful. I really felt everything that the characters were going through, dream of consciousness, the way she writes it, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Just felt really, really touched, which I think is really a testament to her talent, you know, so many years later. And I don't know, it was really a book that stayed with me. Moving on to another Jane Austen. This is Northanger Abbey. I enjoyed this one. I think it's not one of the most read of her work. It's sort of like a satirical novel satirizing gothic novels. Uh, the protagonist is really goofy and there's like a central like frenemies plotline and um, I still would recommend you read it. It's I think her shortest. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not the most special book ever. Another recent read is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. So as I said in the previous video, I won't go on too long. I found this a little bit depressing and honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about the various themes, although I found it well written. I don't know, it's really uncomfortable and um, especially in this day and age, I don't think that it aged very well. Next up is On the Road by Jack Kerouac. When I first read this book back when I was a teenager, I thought it was like really extraordinary, like I really loved it and I don't know if it's really aged that well in my consciousness but I still think that it's definitely sort of a time capsule, a book that describes a whole generation in the 50s. It's definitely something that you want to read especially if you're a young adult I think. It's it's kind of one of those books that are quite formative so I would recommend it in that sense. Next up is Othello. This was my favorite Shakespeare play until I read Romeo and Juliet which is also featured so I'm just gonna talk about the two together. Othello is a gorgeous, gorgeous story. Uh, it's about prejudice most of all and it's about trickery and yeah like loyalty within a marriage and how far trust can go when people really try to get at you and it's heartbreaking and, and purely purely tragic to an extent that is really you know kind of heart shattering and it was my favorite until as I said I read Romeo and Juliet just last month and um, I love Romeo and Juliet as well I thought it was extremely well written just so many more one-liners the central story is immortal. Really two great tragedies that you definitely need to read. Next up is another great favorite of mine. This is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I love this author and Picture of Dorian Gray is just such a 
weird if you think about it, novel and concept, but I just love the idea of it. The idea of the picture that ages and it sort of collects your sins for really an interesting concept and execute it to perfection by such a great author as Oscar Wilde, so yeah. Then we have Pride and Prejudice, of course what's not to love, one of the best romance books of all time. Jane Austen just writes so well and although this is not my favourite, I think Emma is just slightly better. I do feel like the romance between Elizabeth and Mr Darcy is the most iconic. Those back and forths between them are just immortal pieces of dialogue and um, yeah, you have to read this. The next book is one that I actually finished just yesterday and it's another play, it's Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. Um, I gave it three stars but I actually really quite enjoyed it. It's a play on the Greek myth of Pygmalion and it's the idea of sort of like what happens to the person in this case you create. Is this really to their advantage? I don't know, it's, it's really just a really fascinating and thought-provoking play and if you know My Fair Lady, that's the musical that's based on it, but the story um, changes the ending very significantly. Next up we have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I've talked about this book before because I found it really fascinating. It's haunting and it's complex and it really keeps you on the edge for a while and then when the revelation comes it's even more crazy. So um, yeah, I really really liked it. It's really well written and I need to read more from this author. Then we have The Return of the King, so also by Tolkien, the third book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And again, I read it a long time ago, I don't remember it very well, but of course it's the epic ending, so it's great. And again, would recommend Lord of the Rings in any case. Next we have Daisy Miller by Henry James. I read this last summer. I didn't really like this book. I felt it was like a little bit too, I don't know, just coldly sad. I didn't feel particularly passionate about it. It's about a girl who spends the summer in Rome and she sort of does things that are against the etiquette and she gets really greatly judged by everybody around her. But then, I don't know, the social commentary in Harry James, I feel like it's always a bit like not satisfying enough. So um, I don't know, bit of a mixed one. Moving on to the final Jane Austen on the list, it's Sense of Sensibility. This is the first one I read, the first one she wrote, and it's a beautiful tale about friendship and sisterhood really. It follows the same sort of paradigm as the other stories about sort of like um, romances that bloom and then suddenly they stop and then eventually you get the happy ending. It's very really nice. It's Jane Austen and if you like one you kind of like all of them so this is good. Next up is a new favourite of mine. Again I just talked about this. It's Sexist by Harry Miller which I read last month. Harry Miller just shocked me as an author. I have hardly ever read anything that has just really hit me from the first page. I had to highlight it because just the quotes that he comes up with in this really outrageous book, by the way, which is um, an autobiographical account, like he doesn't even change his own name as the character, um, that sort of tells about his life as a struggling artist and um, a lot of his sort of like extramarital activities and uh, road to his divorce. It's yeah, it's it's really shocking in how real it feels. I know he changed a few things, but still, um, I don't know. It's just the way it's written that really, really uh, shocked me, like in a positive way. <laughs> now, next up, we have Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. Hesse, I don't know. And um, this book, I don't know. I probably am not in the right state of mind to take on something that's so like philosophical and sort of Buddhist. I. I don't know, it is the story of a man trying to sort of understand the point of life. I don't know, I didn't particularly love this one. I found it a little bit tedious, but if you're into that sort of more philosophical style of novel, then it's a good choice. Another play, this is A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. I actually really like this one. The themes are quite shocking. It's raw and real in a way that I found really compelling. So um, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed this and I would recommend it. Back to Hemingway, the next book that we have on the list is The Sun Also Rises. 
I love this. I mean, it's one of his masterpieces. It deals with everything from masculinity to unfulfilled desire and trying to get as much as you can from life. Really thought provoking and it's I really just juxtapose it with the way Hemingway just portrays this idea of like perfect masculinity and then he, in his books his men are just so troubled in a way and um, I don't know I just found it really fascinating and beautifully written. The final Dickens I hope is A Tale Two Cities which is the latest I've read. Um, no. Uh uh, I did not feel for any of the characters. I did not care about what was happening. I also found the very, like, Marxist sentiment from Dickens just another show of his character. Just, we have very different political ideals, I feel like. So, um, no. On the bright side, the next one is Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which, yes, is the book that inspired the name of my. Bookstagram account and this YouTube channel and yeah, I love this book and I actually have to reread it I actually think I'm gonna go to the shop tomorrow and buy me a copy because I've only ever read it in Italian if you can believe it so um It's the most sort of autobiographical of Fitzgerald's novels It's the last finished novel and it's a reflection of his marriage and sort of an indictment of his character and his mistakes as well as his wife's obviously um, but it's fictionalized in a way that is so I feel like touching and profound I don't know I fell in love with this book as soon as I read it back when I was much younger and yeah I really feel like I need to reread it too. Next up is the famous book from the photo of Rory reading which is the unabridged Diaries of Sylvia Plath. I was lucky to find this in a charity shop over here uh, or in the UK rather and um, anyway I found this really interesting. I mean I feel like reading diaries is not my favourite. I prefer a novel personally and I wish Sylvia Plath had written more but as you may imagine as such a talented poet her diaries are written beautifully. There's loads of very interesting quotes and it's interesting to see sort of her I don't know, uh, troubles in a way, her everything that was going on in her mind as a being that was so fragile and complicated. Although it's always sad that the real sort of tough diary pages have been destroyed by her husband Ted. Um, anyway, we won't talk about that. This is a good book um, if you're into that style of literary piece. Now another book that I really really enjoyed is Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne which is sort of a really camp book about three women who are trying to make it in showbiz and eventually um, get addicted to pills which are the titular dolls and um, it's kind of exploitative in a way because it's very um, directly influenced by the lives of Judy Garland and also Marilyn Monroe and also somebody else I can think of but the idea is that she is using real people as inspiration and that's why this was a huge hit at the time it came out but these days I just find it really entertaining I mean I really am a sucker for anything that has to do with Hollywood and the entertainment biz in fiction especially so I don't know this was right up my alley and um, it's camp to the right point um, I feel like it's better than the movie in that sense but um, yeah I really enjoyed it it's a fun time. Next up is another book that I've just read and I've not reviewed yet on this channel I believe it is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides and this book I mean it was a long time coming for me because I've been quite a big fan of the movie um, especially when I was younger and then I watched it a few times and you know the movies really capture the sort of ethereal um, vibes of the Lisbon girls who are sort of the central girls and subjects of the story uh, but then on top of that the book really pushes how feral uh, they are and it's so creepy watching this tragedy unfold when you already know the ending because the way it's written um, it's very fascinating that way it really reminded me of In Cold Blood by Truman Capote which I've already talked about although this fortunately is entirely fictional it's gorgeous I love the way it's written I love the characters um, yeah Another one of my all-time favourites is Vanity Fair by William M. Thackeray. This book is one of the best classics I've ever 
red. I am a sucker for a satire and this is about English society upper class during the Napoleonic Wars and you follow these two characters Becky and Amelia and Becky is a social climber and you really see the ugly of the society and I don't know for some reason that really tickled me and I found it so engaging with everything that happens the highs and lows and the intrigues and Thackeray is a very present narrator that will tell you when people are behaving ridiculously which they are most all the time so um i really really like this now we are almost done third to last is walden by henry david thoreau i don't have much to say about this i read it but it didn't really particularly inspire me it has to do with you know so retiring to an isolated place and whatnot but um eh, i don't know not much to say about this it was a little bit boring on the other hand, a masterful book that honestly I should read again is War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. For me, this is the greatest masterpiece of Russian literature. I just love all of the intrigues, the social commentary, the upper class setting of the peace scenes, and then in the war sections, you have just so many reflections about society and the world and everything that the Napoleonic Wars really meant for Europe and the world and how Tolstoy draws a parallel with the time he lives in. It's all absolutely compelling and fascinating and also extremely entertaining. I feel like it's a really really good story. And last but not least is Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. I have been on such a Weathering Heights kick lately. Something about the quotes about sort of love and soulmates that Heathcliff and Catherine utter about each other are just something else. I know it's toxic and destructive, but honestly, that is goals. <laughs> but I don't know, Wuthering Heights is just really a gorgeous novel. Absolutely recommend it. Okay, that was a shocking amount of books and I'm so sorry. But this is it. This is my Rory Gilmore challenge and my recommendations based on some of the books that she reads that I have also read. Let me know if you want to attempt this particular challenge. Let me know if you have any thoughts of your own about the books that I talked about and if there's any of these that you want to read in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like if you like content like this. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!